The it's unbelievable. The, the big library, giant libraries, like the kind where you get lost in it and they, yet you know where you're going. I, I don't have beautiful libraries, lots of places where people go to gather to um, have concerts. I've seen parties. They love to have parties over there. Hi, I'm spiritual medium Kelly White, and this is your superior self. Kelly White, the great and powerful Kelly White. Thank you so much for joining the show. You're very welcome. It's nice to be here. Yeah, I've just I've been watching you and and became I easily become a fan. Um, oh, you're just thank so you. so easy to talk to. I'm excited about where this is where this is going to go. Thank um, you. Yeah, I, I'm fascinated by your story, though, because like you, you weren't always a medium, right? I was not always a medium. No, I How think that I was. About? Well, and I get asked this question a lot. So I know that I was very psychic growing up, but it never would have occurred to me you're going to be a medium. That wouldn't have even been in my thought process because I was a business person. I was a senior vice president of a large food corporation. I worked really hard to get there. I mean, my background is I was a chef and I would never have thought of doing anything other than what I really loved, which was designing menus and selling menus all over the country and all over the world. My territory was international and national. So I was busy on planes and busy traveling and loving my life. And then fate stepped in as fate always does step mm -hmm. in. And I had a traumatic brain injury on um, in 2000, in the year 2000, in August of 2000, so 21 years ago. And when I had this traumatic brain injury, what happened is I was literally stepping out, stepping into my car. I should back up and say that I had been out of the country for six weeks, so that my time, I was a little disoriented. And when I got into my car, as I was getting into the car, I smashed the front of my head and blacked out and not knowing that the significance of what had happened. I didn't know that my life was completely over at that moment and a new life was about to begin. And uh, I had no way of knowing this. All I knew was that I felt this blood rushing through my brain but at the time, I was a single parent. I was a really hard worker. I had business to do. I would never have thought the significance of hitting my head, which was a real traumatic brain injury. It was the same injury that Natasha Richardson had. Mm. And uh, she died like 17 hours later of the same injury. So I knew that, I mean, now I know <laughs> at the time, I didn't know what was happening. All I knew is that I had to... Um, figure out my life, what was happening to me, because from that moment on, things began to change rather quickly. And to make a long story short, I then later became, um, I started seeing dead people. Everywhere I went, I saw dead people. And that was uh, very alarming, initially, very alarming because I didn't know what was happening to me. And at the time I thought, I didn't even know the term schizophrenic. Am I schizophrenic? Like what's happening, you know? And my mother was a really well-known psychologist in Beverly Hills, which is where I was from for 45 years. And when all of this happened, it was my mom that was able to say, no, honey, you're not schizophrenic. You're having, you know, an anxiety, this or that, whatever she said to me, it calmed me down enough. But then I found out that her father, my mother's father had been a physical medium and mediumship ran in my family for generations, which I did not know. And on top of that, when I was really, really young, when I was about three, I had encephalitis, which is inflammation of the brain. So my brain was always being formed to become a medium because the three ways that I know that somebody becomes a medium, 
is through, you know, somebody in your family was a medium through an illness or through a head injury. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, those are about the three ways. I mean, you're either, you yeah, it usually has to run in the family. There's some sort of connection. And the other thing is this, when you are a medium, you have practiced this in, for me, to, in order to have cataclysmically begun, it, I mean, it was hit in the head, I'm seeing dead people, what happens now? That would mean that in many, many lifetimes, I had been a practicing medium. I had been a psychic or a medium in many, many lifetimes in order to hit the ground running as hard as I have with this. Man, that's amazing. What, I know. Like, who, what was the first, uh, I guess, person that you saw that you realized, well, uh, you shouldn't be here? This is a great question. You're going to love this. So, again, I was living, here's my background. I was living at the beach, single parent. I have this horrific head injury. I can't work any longer. I lose my very well-paying job. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I had to go, I was at UCLA for weeks trying to um, get help for my brain injury. And we decided not to do surgery. We decided medication. And I mean, it was all of these things that were going on at the same time, because at the same time, I had to learn how to walk and talk and see and hear. And I'm seeing dead people. So it was a lot. So what happened at one night, I was on my balcony and just literally, I had this memory and I had forgotten about this. When I was 21, I went to India. And when I was in India, this man came up to me and he said, can I read your thumb? I'm like, can you read my thumb? I'm 21. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard about these people, but in India, they're famous for this. They take your thumb and they read it and they look at your Akashic records. And this guy said this following to me, I didn't have my passport. So there's no way he could have known my name. He had my first and last name, my mother's first and last name, my boyfriend at the time's first and last name. And then he started talking about all of these things. Talk about getting my attention. And he said to me, you were a famous medium in India. And he said, in this lifetime, you're going to decide if that's what you're going to be. And I said, what? And he said, yeah. He said, you're going to decide. You're going to have a time in your life where you're going to decide yes or no, you're going to be a medium. So now I'm on my in my balcony, I'm looking at the ocean and I start screaming out to God. I said, what the f- do you want me to do? Do you <laughs> want me to be an effing medium? Like, what do you want me to do? And that evening, after I screamed that out loud, I walk outside to the balcony and I see this woman, beautiful older woman. I'm going to say she's late seventies, early eighties. Beautiful. She was wearing a St. John's knit outfit. And I'll never forget it because it was something that I had always wanted to buy, but they were really expensive, like $2,000 an outfit. And I, I know. So I see this woman. She's out there smoking, right? She's smoking and she's looking at me and I'm looking at her and I, I've never seen her before. And I was like, I just waved. And then she went like this. She waved back. She waved. I waved. Every night I go out to my balcony and I see this woman dressed in a St. John's knit different outfit every single night. I said, what is this? So then one weekend, my sister came over, my sister, the non-believer, and she comes over and she said, you know, they're, they're selling that condo next door. Let's go take a look. I said, okay. So we go over to this condo and I said, that's odd. That's, that's my balcony. I said, and the place was empty. And I said, where's the woman to the guy that was packing things up? I said, where's the woman that lives here? I have to say hello to her. She's always dressed so beautiful with St. John Nitz. And he said, well, that's my mother, but she passed away nine months ago. And he said, she always wore St. How would you know that? And I said, and then I was I just saw so, yesterday. I, I, I started saying, I saw her every night smoking. And he said, well, she died of lung cancer. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like, no shit. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I was like, so taken. And then my sister's like, come on, st- so you have to understand my sister was very against this. She was the anti-medium person mm-hmm. in my family. And she was like, stop talking. You're going to think they're going to think you're crazy. So I had mm-hmm. to go through that adjustment of who can hear it, who can't hear it. But it was from that moment on that I started seeing it. I was flooded with wow. seeing people and you're never alone. So if you walk in a room it will be your mother, your father, your grandparents, your spirit guides, your angels, friends from high school. You'd be floored 
who shows up. Really? You just um, never know. You're never alone. How did, like, how long did you make that transition of, like, like not telling anybody about it until, like, you? Oh, now great question. Show? Great question. This is really funny. But it was James Van Prague, my best friend, who said, um, James I'm outing Van you. Prague. Yeah, I'm James Van you. Prague. I'm outing you. And I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, yeah, honey, I'm outing you. This is enough. You're here to be a medium. And um, if it wasn't for him, I probably would still be not you know, I had to get real comfortable with who I am and what I do. And uh, the other thing is, years later, um, when I was 52 years old, actually, I went back to grad school. And I'm really proud of that. Because I love this story. It's a really, you can do anything at any age. You have not missed a boat. I mean, and I felt as a medium, it wasn't enough. Because I feel that when people come to see me as a medium, they need some real grounding here. They, I need to know what's going on psychologically with them because I could say a message or anybody who's a medium could give a message that sets them on a place that they, you know, oh no, for the rest of their life, they're going to be up thinking about this. I, I can't have that. So I actually teach therapists who are budding mediums how to work with this. And then I teach mediums how to be therapeutic in their approach because I think it's both on both ways. And as the world matures spiritually, we're going to see a combination of mediums that are therapists and therapists that are mediums, because it's kind of, to me, it's the next evolution sure. of life. Yeah, so I went back at 52 for grad school and it was the greatest thing I ever did. For psychology, and right? For psychology. Yeah. Counseling. So I'm also, a, I'm a licensed psychotherapist. And initially my practice was very, um, I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> and then the word got out anyway, because I would see certain people for mediumship and then certain people for just, you know, um, psychology. And then I just said, oh, who the hell with it? I, I can't kiss, keep up this ruse. Sure. This is who I am. And then, you know, what happened is certain people would find my business cards and they would say, like, I think, what did I have on there? I don't know, spiritual therapist or I don't know, whatever. I, they said, and then one of them actually said, are you a medium? I said, yeah, I am. He said, good, I've been looking for a good medium. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So looking it's for been a, a funny, medium. funny story. Yeah, it's been a f fascinating adventure. I love the psychology board. I'm going back for, for school and I love psychology. Like, I just love it. I love the, the idea. Are you of going it. back for uh, psychology or well, I'm minoring or in business? psychology? It's business, business, um, uh, majoring in business, minor in psychology, but I want to go to graduate school and get my I want to get my degree or my, my license in counseling. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I just love it. Well, it's a great thing to have because you learn so much about yourself with it too. And, you know, in business, there are some actually great programs for psychologists and psychotherapists that work in corporations. Yep. And that kind of combination is really important too. Yeah. But I'm just, business I, world has to yeah, wake business up spiritually. World needs, yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Like, I'm I'm very much into plugged into the spiritual world. Like, like what your work is. Like, I love that near death experiences, out about experiences, things like that. Spirituality, like connecting with the one. Um, have just, you had any yourself? No, I have not. I've 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 been following Bob Monroe and his in his work, his trilogy, uh, Tom Campbell. Oh, I love Tom Campbell. Tom have Campbell's you taken his classes? No, I have not. I Get have his, out. I have his binaural beats. He came on the show. We had a conversation. Okay. I, we I know, love Tom. In touch. Yeah, he's great. Um, so One I'm, of the I'm, wisest people oh that will gosh. ever be on our planet. Yeah. That like is just, incarnated with the greatest wisdom. I took a, a five-day course with him. Mm -hmm. And James Van Prague and I both took it together. In the first hour, James said, it's too much for me. <laughs> he said, I said, what? Come on, we signed up together. You asked me to take the damn class. What was, what was and, too much about it? Well, it was. It's a lot. It's a, some of it is a lot of left brain thinking, hmm. and it's. Um, but what James did get out of it was extraordinary. And he quotes Tom all the time, and he loves Tom to death. But he couldn't sit still. You know, that's the thing. You have to do the binary beats, and you sit still for a few days, at like five. But God, if you get an opportunity to take his class, do yeah. it. He's the, he's the bomb. I love him. What did you experience there? Like, did you I experienced something. I oh well, I'm used to doing that. But I'll tell you a wild thing that happened, and I did share this with the class and with Tom. Um, out of the blue, 
I heard, so you, you have these binary beats and it puts you in another state of consciousness. And I found myself with all of a sudden, I don't know how to explain this. I'll just say it the way it happened. A horse appeared and this horse appears and starts talking to me as if just like we're having a dialogue. And he said, I'm alone. I'm feeling very upset. And he actually used very specific words about how he was feeling and he had to get out of there. And I said, well, I'll help you, but I don't know where you are. So he starts telling me all of these things. I'm actually having a conversation with horse uh, and I'm in another state of mind, let alone another state. I finish with that. An hour later, I'm on a break, lunch break, and my phone rings and it's a girlfriend of mine. And she says, Kelly, I don't know what to do. I've got my horse and I've got it. And I said, what? Wait a minute. Your horse. What does he look like? What da, da, da. I said, Sue, you're never going to believe this. That your horse came to me. And was telling me everything. And you've got to find a place for him. And she said, well, I don't know another place. So then another friend called. And long story short, we got this horse moved out of that place to a better place. And it was all from that moment. So I don't know how this works. I don't know how to explain how any of this works. But I learned that there was a lot about telepathy mm -hmm. that goes on with, with him, with his work. And the other thing that he does that I had never done before is remote viewing. And that was kind of fascinating. Have you, did never, he talk about that? No, he talks a little bit about that. I'm still trying to understand it where you kind of use your, I guess, ability. Your, to it, it puts you in that frame of mind, right? You're in that frame. And then he says, you just go to wherever it is. And there are these things that you, you Google the spots. I forget mm. how it works. I did it. It does work. I was kind of astounded what I saw. So I, I, I it's, anyway. Tell me, what'd you see? Well, I, somehow I ended up on Mars. <laughs> I'm like, what? And I started <laughs> seeing these different landing points of different people that were there, like kind of keeping watch on whatever is going on. So I actually said, well, I guess there are people on Mars that are already there. So it's really what this I is thought. So interesting because Bob Monroe, his have you read his books, his trilogy at all? I haven't. I'm sorry, I did. Such a beautiful writer. Such yeah. a beautiful writer. Um, he was a fascinating that, human being. Yeah, absolutely. Businessman. Very, very. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? Like the the one thing Tom Campbell talks about was like you know when he first read his first book, he was like, "Is this guy an imposter just trying to make money?" And then he shows up at his house and he's like, "This guy doesn't need any more money," you know. And this right. is a subject you don't really you don't typically put out there unless you're no. interested in it. Um, but does the, those experiences at all, like, do they, do they kind of, are they in relation to what you do? Like, do you find evidence of that when in your field of work, like, are they parallel or are they just totally different? Like, what, how does that work? Well, as far as, um, do I find like um, evidence, I guess evidence, like, well, yeah. I'm an evidential medium. And so I, when somebody comes to me, I give proof that somebody's passed away, that they're here. Things that I couldn't know in my wildest dreams. And uh, I, names, dates. I'm very good with names. Names seem to come easily through to me. Um, I, I, the way they die often. I seem to specialize in suicide um, of people who've crossed over from that. And I just give a lot of evidence. I, it just comes in. I get very still, it's, the information comes in, and I provide evidence. So I know that it all exists because I see the miracle of it every single day of my life. Mm, how does it make you feel? Like Great. Yeah. I always love it. Some make me sad. Sometimes I get sad, and sometimes I get really happy. When I work with people, ch um, ch loss of children, that's a hard one for me. Mm -hmm. that, that one is a tough one, and... I'm fortunately mature enough to be able to hold on to the energy and hold on to the space for the mothers and the fathers that have lost children. And I very yeah. carefully hold their hearts. I mean, mm -hmm. when I say hold their heart very carefully and I help them through because I feel that the souls, when children are lost, when they pass over, that they only signed up. So we have an agreement before we incarnate of how long we want to be here. That soul may have only signed up for three years. The parents would have made the agreement, okay, the soul only needs to be there for three years. 
or the soul needs to be here for 16 years or 12 years or eight years or whatever it happens to be. And I always say, if God came to me and I tell all the parents this and said, look, Kelly, I need you to do me a favor. I'd be like, no, go, you know, no, I, I can't do that one. Um, but the women, the people that do do it, and it's men and women who do this, they're the, they're my heroes because they have allowed a soul to come in to express itself for a small amount of time. And what happens is when that happens, it teaches the parents and everybody around them about love and compassion and faith and all of these things. And the only reason we incarnate here is for compassion, empathy, kindness, faith, love, joy. That's it. And this is a hard school to go to. And oh so anybody God, who goes, this is the hardest school of all. If you sign up for this school, you come back over and over to evolve and you come back to this particular school because this school has black and white in it. And it has, you know, darkness and light in it. It has evil and good. It has everything mm -hmm. to help your soul learn um, to, to grow and expand. Now, mediumship, right? Like <clears throat> you see um, people, energy, you see um, colors. You know, I see colors. auras. Mm -hmm. Do you? help other people like let's say uh, people that aren't looking to, to connect with a loved one do you help them progress in this life oh absolutely so people come to me it's a great question so if they don't come to me for mediumship they might come to me for a soul reading they may come to me and so what i do is i work with a birth date usually helps open that door for me and then i go okay this is why you incarnated blah, 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 blah. here we go let's just sum it up and then from there they'll I can help them move through blocks of whatever's been blocking them or whatever trauma. I also specialize in trauma. And my one of my partners, Dr. Shirley and Palazzari, Shirley and I had a show for years. And we do webinars on trauma. And trauma often blocks somebody from moving forward. So I work a lot with that. So yeah, so if they come to see me, sometimes it's for spiritual counseling. And I'll just say, all right, what do you want to know? Where are you? And I'll go, okay, here we go. So usually it's been my experience when somebody has a session with me that they get what they need. I want to make sure that everybody gets what they need here. And it's like a gentle way of, come on, let's go. Keep going. You know, don't, don't slow down. It's okay. And I feel that now during this particular time that we're in with 2021, 2020 and 2021 in 2019, I did a radio show with James Van Prague. And I said to him, 2020, it's going to be a year that we will never forget. It's going to be pretty bad, James. It's going to be, and I thought it was terrorism. And I said, it's going to change our life. It's going to this, this, this. It to the point where he was like, all right, stop already. You know? And I couldn't stop myself. I saw it so clearly of what was going to happen. And I didn't know, I didn't know pandemic, but I thought something is huge is going to happen. It got, was to the point where people were like, all right, Kelly, shut up. Stop. You're scaring me. I mean, this was went on and on. So 2021, tw we know what happened in 2020. It was really about going inward. It, it really discovering who you are. It stopped everybody in their tracks. It had to. 2021 is going to be about, it's a little different. It's going to be a lot of explosive energies. It's going to be um, battle of the old ways of karmic ways of doing things with the new um, age of Aquarius, new ways of doing things. It's going to be more collaboration and community and social justice as opposed to the old Capricorn ways. So we're going to see all kinds of things. And anybody who incarnated during this time and is still here with us wanted to be here. So it will grow our souls seven times more to be here during this time of this great awakening. Wow. I love that. Yeah. Cause I, I hear a lot of like people that are here a lot. There are a lot of like, I guess they call them messengers or they call them Mm -hmm. I guess people that are trying to help the conscious overall consciousness get uh, a little bit more, you know, I guess more development. Yes. And um, I, I meditate quite a bit in the morning and I, and I become very spiritual in my growth and, and try to help that consciousness. And I, and I, and I, I just started meditating where I'm going mm -hmm. inward because it was always a mystery. Like you, all the mm -hmm. mystical texts, all the great books said you have to go within. And I'm like, well, how yeah. do you do that? 
I'm like, what does that go even within? mean? Go within. <laughs> I would love to go within. He just taught me how. There's, you know, of course, as, as a human, I want to know the guide, the map. But I, I've started as a male too. <laughs> yeah, right. But I feel like I can channel my higher self a little bit. Uh-huh. I feel like I can talk to that, and, and then I feel like I'm having conversations with God, whatever the source is. Uh-huh. Right. I, mean, I, I use the term God. Mm-hmm. Um. I feel like it is God. I feel like it is God. And then, but, it, but, but I feel like it, that is a part of me that is connected with him. So it's like, I don't know if it's a higher, my higher source or God, but I'm sitting on a, when I'm meditating, <clears throat> I'm sitting on a mountaintop with him and it, it's not a person. It's like a energy source. It's like a gold yellow or not, I guess a gold white ball of energy. Mm-hmm. And I'm speaking to it and I'm basically saying, and it's for a little, it's not a long time. It's a very short, I'm like, God, there is a lot of suffering. And he's like, yes, there is, or he or she, whatever the energy. Um, and I'm like, well, how do I help the suffering? And he's like, use your voice. I'm like, use my voice. And I guess he's talking about the podcast. And I'm like, well, I'm not, I don't know if I'm the guy to do that. Like, <laughs> I'm just mm-hmm. like, I need help. And he's like, I'll give you all the help that you can afford. And then that boom, I'm done. Like, I can't, I can't maintain that, uh, that, that, that awareness for that long because it's so powerful. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're connected. And you got what you were told. Yeah. You got the, what you were needed to hear. Yeah. But I mean, there is a lot of suffering out there. And like, mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of people that want to do good, like you, including yourself and James. I mean, you guys have a fantastic podcast or sh- radio you. show that I, I find truly entertaining one and very educational. Um, you guys have a good mix, like chemistry. Like you guys just vibe. Oh, he's my well. best friend. So, <laughs> and you know how we come up with our topics is we talk every day and we'll be talking about this or, and he was in his garden the other day and he said, Oh, he called me. He said, I actually, he FaceTimed me from his garden. And he said, look, look at my garden. It's just the most miracle of life. Look, isn't it a miracle how we go from season to season? And I said, why don't we do a show on that? The miracle of life. He said, yes. So this is how our show, how our shows evolve. We always have had deep conversations and because we're, uh, you know, I'm blessed to have him in my life, frankly, very blessed, but I know it was a re- result of many, many lifetimes that we've shared together with the same um, w- wanting to help others. And when this happened, when 2020, when 2020 started in March, I picked up the phone and I called him and I said, honey, we have to do something. We have to do something. This year, as I've predicted, is going to be really rough and people are going to get very, very down. So we have to do something. I said, and you're the most famous of all. You really have to get out there. And he goes, okay, honey, I'll do it. What do you want me to do? <laughs> and I go, do a show every day. You know, he did a show every day until he got pretty tired <laughs> and it's awesome. exhausting. It but exhausting. then now we do the show together on Monday nights and then he does a show on Monday and I do the show on Thursday. And it's really great because the world is going to need help right yeah. now. Where can, where can they find that? Just a quick They plug. can find us on, let's see, the show is called Both Sides Now and Beyond with James Van Prague and Kelly White. And that's on Monday nights at, let's see, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And that's on YouTube channel, James Van Prague YouTube channel, or on Facebook Live on James Van Prague's site on Facebook or my site, Spiritual Medium Kelly White. So we do both FaceTime, Facebook, I get them mixed up, Facebook and um, YouTube. That's awesome. where they can find us. And if you can't catch us live, you can always watch the re- you know. Yeah, I've been anytime. watching you on YouTube. It's great. It's fun, um, right? It is fun. You, you we laugh nice a lot, energy. and and uh, it's good energy, <laughs> and it makes people feel good, and they learn yeah. a lot about spirituality. And James's big thing has always been to dispel fear hmm. that there's either fear or love, and people have a great fear of death. Number one is public speaking, believe it or not, sure. but number two is um, fear of death. And I hope that when we give this evidence that they understand, that people understand there's no such thing as death, that when the soul leaves, uh, the soul goes home to the other side and it's, there's a meet and greet and they're just so happy to be there. I mean, it's a whole deal that goes on. And then, um, and the soul will come back and visit. And mm. It's so interesting. Like what, so how, like did your and in, like interactions with the other side like 
give you this evidence? Like, did they talk about this with you? Like, is that? Oh how... yeah, they've talked about everything that goes on. They because and I, my I've guides. Found, I found out near death experiences through my research through Ray Moody and and oh, I lo- Raymond Moody you. was was the best. Yeah, um, you being a psychologist, right? Like Raymond Moody, psychotherapist. Awesome. He's like mm-hmm. he's yep. the he's the man. Um, he was, but, but but your dealings with the other side has has brought forth that evidence for you. Yes, it's brought a lot of evidence to me. It tells me a lot. Here's another thing that happened. I We all have spirit guides. And most of us, all of us have one. We're never alone. We At least all of us have one. But most of us, some of us have two. Lately, during COVID, I have seen people have three and four guides for different various reasons. The reason I bring this up is I actually got to see my spirit guides. I was in Tahiti, actually, on an island with no electricity, and they appeared with my physical eyes. It had never happened before, and it's a whole story about how it happened, but it was a shock to my system. I thought I was going to have a heart attack, actually. When somebody appears to you and manifests, it's a little frightening. So, like, what do you mean manifest? Like, were you meditating? Just physically. No, I was asleep. Mm -hmm. I was asleep, and I had to go to the bathroom. I was with my boyfriend at the time, and I said... uh, and it was pitch black. And I said, oh, it's really weird. I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. That just never happened to me. And I said, That's, I have to. And I said, uh, we have to get the l- lantern. And he said, oh, OK. You know, <laughs> and this guy was the head of a large corporation. And he didn't have any belief in this in spirits or spirit guy. He wouldn't have known to even say this. But anyway, I get up. And before he could grab the thing to the little lighter. Before he could grab it. I look up and there's an Indian man from India floating three feet above me, just in an outfit. You didn't get to the bathroom yourself because I would have definitely. Yeah, well, I actually you would have, and I started screaming hysterically, bloody murder, and my boyfriend is saying, "There's nobody here. What are you talking about? There's nobody here." And I'm like, "Ah!" and I'm like, (laughs) I'm like crazy, like a crazy animal. I'm crazy screaming, and um big smile and radiate so much love and if I shut my eyes or opened them they were still there and they really wanted me to see them and he was there for 90 seconds and I I actually had I just fainted and when I came to I had a beautiful woman guide there that was just phenomenal and big radiant of love and um, all I can say is I'm screaming and then she leaves and my boyfriend says I Darling, you you sh- you were so mean. Those were your spirit guides. You're so and I mean. said, yeah, it was my spirit guides. I mean, th- they had to have put that in this lunkhead's head. He would never have said that. So, I, I and nobody came to get us, and I'm screaming on the, and I'm, we're on a little a little hut. It, it was meant to be. I mean, they really made this happen. So, from my guides. They're the ones that have taught me about life review. They've taught me about what it's like to be a spirit guide. They've taught me about what life is like on the other side. They've taken me on journeys on the other side. So I am very clear about what goes on and who's there and what goes on and the limitless possibilities of it. So I've had my own experiences of it. Um, And then when I work with different people, every day I learn something else from another person or another guide or, or something like this. I had a, I work with a healer whose name is Prajna Avalon and she's wonderful. And I have a session with her every other week. Should have her on. She's great. Yeah, and definitely. She's terrific. She lives in Brazil right now, but she is just a phenomenal, phenomenal healer. And I was having a, a healing session with her this week. And out of the blue, my grandfather showed up hmm. on my father's side, who was not a medium. And he passed away 45 years ago. And I was very surprised. And this is what he said to me. He said, I'm, thank you for paving the way for me to incarnate. <laughs> Which is a big statement because it meant that I'm, the work I'm doing is going to help him incarnate at some point soon. And he came from Russia and he was 17, you know, in 1900 and something. And he came over. And how brave he had to have been to pave the way for me to be here. And so I thought, wow, wow. I've never wow. heard a soul say that before. So I learn things every day, sure. every day. Wow, that is powerful. 
what yeah. uh, you said going on the other side, they've shown you the other side. Like what, uh -huh. well, besides Oh my God, that, it's like, unbelievable. The, the big library, giant libraries, like the kind where you get lost in it and they, yet you know where you're going. I, I don't have beautiful libraries, lots of places where people go to gather to um, have concerts. I've seen parties. They love to have parties over there. A lot of parties. I'm not allowed to go in, but I see them and they, they won't let me in. It's the damnedest thing ever. Um, I've tried to poke my way around. I've just seen, it's beautiful. The colors, they don't, we don't even have colors to describe the colors. And I love color. These colors, I can't even get the color. It's so like miraculous, these colors. And it's, did you ever see the movie, What Dreams May Come? Yes. It's that kind of. That. But like that, there's another movie you should see. What is the name of it? Something. It was a Brazilian movie about souls. Golly, what was the name of that? About what happens when you pass away and you you um, go through. And it was very accurate. Something about put Brazil and souls soul movie, S O U L movie. It was some something phenomenal. I just watched the um, the soul Disney soul movie. Oh yeah, that was wasn't kinda, that good? That was good. Yeah. I was like, yeah. yeah I, I love the this. fact that they use a jazz musician. I know, right? I, know. <laughs> I thought that was and he's great. so good. And then he falls in a, in a, in a man I cover. know. And then they let him come back. Yeah. So that was, that was huh. interesting. Yeah. yeah but it was, I, interesting. I, it was good. It was good. I'm glad I'm surprised that Disney, that Disney did, did that. It. I'm surprised they did that. Too. But, you know, we're making some breakthroughs now. Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's not the here. same shame thing that we used to be, I don't think. And now, I don't, you know, it's funny. I live in a small town now from beverly hills it's hysterical and i don't care if somebody knows what i do or they don't do i really don't care anymore i mm. mean you get to a point where you just don't give a crap you just are who you are you do what you need to do sure. and live your life and so it, it's very interesting I, so having said that i think that the soul reference now people are opening up to spirituality disney opened up yeah. to it yeah i mean the, the feeling that i feel like with my spirituality um i love the encounters that i have when i go within when i have my meditations mm -hmm. so much that i've you know i've cut back on drinking i've you know because you know during covid yep. lockdown pandemic like I mean, oh kids, tell me you know i love like my I glass was, of wine exactly like i was drinking more beer i had you know i had gained the covid 15 and oh i hear you you know and i had mm -hmm. um I started meditating more and trying to go with <laughs> it and find out. And then like Good. I started reaching, you know, different levels of, 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 I guess the other side, non-physical and, um, Christina Rasmussen. It's a journey. I don't know if you, you didn't, do you know her, Chris, Christina Rasmussen? She wrote, mm -hmm. um, where did you go? And she talks uh -oh. about, uh, going and lifting the veil and connecting with the, your loved ones that you've lost and, good I had, I had an aha moment with her book and i was like man i'm not stopping so like you know now that i i continue to do my meditation like i just have this great feeling like i don't want to mess with my consciousness like i don't want to i want to wake up every right. morning the best that i can to connect and you should have a session with prajna would be good for you oh my god you, you would actually like it it kind of amazing me, though like it scares me what? a little bit not because it's like woo woo or nothing but like oh. I, like my my like i was talking to um who was this marianne Bohr. Uh, I know, love Marianne. Marianne. Yeah. In fact, in fact, Prashna is in Marianne's book. Really? Mm -hmm. and, and she was like, Trey, you need to have a session. And if she's listening right now, shout out to you, Marianne. You're the best. Love um, Marianne. She's like, you need to have a session, a reading. I'm like, Marianne, I'm scared to have a reading. She's like, why? I was like, what if they tell me I don't, something I don't want to hear? Like, you know what I mean? Like with the podcast, like I, I want the podcast to be successful and, and push me in a different direction in life. And I want to create my reality. And I want this to be a big stepping stone for me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what if they tell me it's going to flop? You know what I mean? Like that, it scares me a little bit. I don't bit. think anybody's going to say that. I think that but nobody that, but would say that. I know they wouldn't say that, but what if, it, like, what if, like, I don't want false hope either. I don't want people to be mm -hmm. like, oh, this is going to be huge, you know? Like, and then I'm like, I think well, you should believe in yourself, truly believe in yourself. But, but what Prashna's work is not about as a medium. Her work as, as a healer, it, it, she goes into the template, if you will, and she's um, just an extraordinary healer. And she works on whatever whatever the guides are telling her to work on could be fear in your case. Mm. It could be expectation. It could be, sure. I don't know, it could be attachments. It, 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 attachment, yeah. whatever it is it really does make a difference in your spiritual growth. I, I find it really does make a difference. 
And you don't have to go to have a reading. Yeah. That, well, that's interesting. Well, I'm definitely, I love readings now, um, but I just, <laughs> it was my initial fear, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I just find that because my energy rises when I speak with mm-hmm. somebody about my truth, like when I speak, when I truly, like when I'm speaking with you right now, like I, we, you and I are very, I don't know. I feel like we're similar and we have similar interests and I, my vibration raises and, and I feel, I feel good when I speak to you and the same oh, thing, good. I, I, I I had a conversation with another, another, another medium. And, um, it was just a great conversation. Like it just, you know, it just raising your vibration. And well, that's what a good medium does. A good spiritual person does that. They want to make you feel good and they get your energy going. And that's Mm -hmm. really how life works. And the other thing about energy is a really great thing is it will continue to flow and flow and flow and alcohol will stop that. It does yeah, absolutely that, like it messes you know? with you like clarity, it does you mess know? with you. it truly does you know and then i mean well i know a lot of people i'm not vegan but i'm pretty close to it that really helps too sugar too I mean, sugar yeah definitely yeah i don't and yeah I, I, I don't clean do my act. i got three kids and it's i, f- I find myself oh, eating wow. chick-fil-a quite a bit i need to slow down a little bit yeah <laughs> probably yeah <laughs> Uh, it's interesting though that um you so the healer right and she's in brazil how did you find mm-hmm. her well, she was in Marianne Bohr's book, oh, okay. and then okay. I had her on my show, um, B- Both Sides Now TV with Dr. Shirley, and I just fell in love with her. I thought, boy, she's such a great healer. She graduated from the Barbara Brennan School of Healing in Massachusetts, mm. so she lived in Massachusetts for 20 years, and she um, actually later worked with Ama, if you know who Ama is, the Hugging mm. Saint, a very famous saint in India. And she lived on the ashram for quite some time. And then recently she's moved to Brazil. And I only say this because uh, her healing abilities are, can be done anywhere. And she's a phenomenal healer. So I really encourage everybody to have a session with her. I just love her work. And you feel yeah. so good afterwards. Yeah. Re- refreshed and energized. You do feel re- re- refreshed. And then you re- and it really does put you back in a spiritual place. I mean, I see several people in a day and I work really hard. So a couple times a month, I do every other week I have a session with her because it's just important for me to remember, stop, slow down, clear yourself out. Here we go sure. again. Cause this is a long year. <laughs> Last year was long. This year is long. Well, where do you see yourself going this year? Like what is your, what is your mission? I know you're, well, you're... it's a great question. I'm yeah. finishing my book because I have to finish it, taking off the next week for a week um, to finish the book. I finished it, and apparently my editor said, "I." It, good news is I know how to write. Bad news is I have to more stuff to do. So I have to finish that. So number one priority is finishing my damn book, getting that out there. Mm-hmm. I've only been working on it for 10 years, so I have to do that. And um, just doing a show with James. I mean, I'm not sure where it's going to take us, but I love working with James. And I love doing my own show on Thursday. It's called Ask Me Anything. And I, lo- I like that. So I, d- so I love the work anything. I do. What yeah. do they ask you on there? Oh, my gosh. They ask me about the other side. They ask me, um, do their loved ones, you know, how do they see a sign if their loved ones are here? I had somebody ask me today about the ch- she was in, when she was born her kidneys weren't um, fully developed. And so she said, my mother wouldn't have anything to do with me. Has that affected me? (laughs) Let's see. Yes. That's an easy answer. That's an easy answer, but kidneys represent fear. So Mm -hmm. her mother must have been, you know, traumatized at some point. I mean, I could go back and on and on. So I can answer everything from a spiritual lens to a psychological lens to both, whatever it happens to be. They often ask me, they want to know, um, you know, like, what is life? How old are you on the other side? I, I got that one today. It was a kind of a cute question. You're any age you want to be. But often you come back as the age that you feel good about, the age that you were like just loved. That's often the, the age. Well, how many lives do we usually tend to live here? Like reincarnated? That's a damn good question. Um, I Some people will say thousands. I don't say that. I just don't think that's accurate. Um, I think we come back every so often to finish up our major um, contract with this dimension. And I am thinking that I'm just almost done. (laughs) We gotta be, if you start, like, if you start, my thing is right. Like, I feel like we're here to work on this stuff, but once you start realizing what this is behind the veil, like how many more times you come back? 
I mean, well, once you, your conscious starts to raise and you, you and expand, and here's the thing. When I meet somebody, I'll say, oh, how old is that person? Is that, and I don't mean in years, are they in first grade? Are they babies? Are they getting their PhD? Where does that, like a Tom Campbell, come on, that, that's a, such an yeah. old wise soul. Come on. He's here as an avatar, if you will. He's here to help humanity. There's no doubt in my mind. James Van Prague here to help humanity um i'd like to think of myself on that scale Kelly not White, anywhere Avatar. near but uh, yeah there you go but i mean it, i mean those two have been around for a long time and but something along those lines and so whenever anybody is if they are at say a, a younger age and i'm not talking about the you know the sure. age yeah. physical age they'll be back until they learn what they have to learn they will be back until they learn everything not to do mm. like don't hit don't throw sand don't spit be nice be good be kind it's not all that hard but for some i mean really and i didn't come from any religious background but i have to say uh, the whole the jesus was right i mean just be nice be good be kind have compassion have empathy he's mm -hmm. been screaming that message forever and that's the truth have you experienced jesus or the buddha at all I have. I've experienced Jesus a couple of times after was, my head what, injury. What was that like? Well, it, the funny thing is my father is Jewish and my, my he's passed and my mother who's passed also was Southern Baptist. So that kind of canceled out any religion that I would have had. So I didn't know from anything about anything. Mm -hmm. And after my head injury, when I was like really Pluto and I was very, very ill and probably dying, uh, he appeared right mm -hmm. in front of me. And I was knew then that i was going to be okay wow knew then I was going to be okay. he smiled and he put this i don't know for lack of a word, better word smelling salts or something under my nose and then i said could you do that again i actually said that to him and he out loud and he did it, a big smile and um about later that day i came back around again wow That's so he exists uh, again from I'm not a religious person, don't know anything about it, but I can tell you that he is a, an incredible highest form of a master that ever has I'm ever sure. walked yeah, the earth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just I've I've talked to other mediums that have had experiences, uh, mm -hmm. and they well, they it's have. Just, it's just yeah, powerful. You know, just powerful mysterious. stuff. Powerful stuff. Kelly yeah. White on the show. I can't believe this. Um, Yay! Very fun. Um, how can people <laughs> connect with you? Um, so they can go to my website, kellywhite.com, K-E-L-L-E-E-W-H-I-T-E, -E -E, kellywhite.com, or they can go to my Facebook page at, um, spiritual medium, Kelly White. They can go to my Instagram, but I don't know. I think it's spiritual medium, Kelly White. <laughs> I don't know how to do any of this, but I have a great assistant. And she yeah. knows everything. Yeah. I'm definitely going to follow. I'm definitely going to follow Kelly White after tonight um well good thank you last question um mm -hmm. kind of important what do you okay. want your what do you want your legacy to be that i helped a lot of people i think you're doing that thank you, you really thank are. you i really want my legacy to be known as i helped as many people as i possibly could mm. that's the truth that is the truth. get them through this get them through it definitely mm -hmm. kelly white check her out go thank watch you. her show Thank Kelly, you. Thank you so much for joining the show. This has been an absolute pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.